ऑनरेबल रक्षा मंत्री श्री अरुण जेटली जी श्रीमती संगीता जेटली जी फ्लैग ऑफिसर कमांडिंग इन चीफ ईस्ट नेवी कमांड वाइस आर्मी सचिव सोनी सीला ग्रुप डीएनए वाइस आर्मी सुबेदार डी चेयरमैन एंड मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर ऑफ गार्डन रीच शिप बिल्डर्स एंड इंजीनियर्स कमांडिंग ऑफिसर एंड द क्रू ऑफ आईएनएस कमोटर distinguished guests flag officers members of the media ladies and gentlemen it is indeed a distinct honor and a proud privilege for the indian navy to have the honorable rakshamanthi ji here with us at vishakhapatnam for the commissioning of ins kamoda the very outset I would like to accord a very warm welcome to the Honourable Minister and all our distinguished guests who have spared the valuable time to be with us on this very special occasion. The commissioning of INS Kamota is indeed a historic occasion as we revive the tradition of placing of ASW corvettes in Vaisak. As you are all aware. INS Kamota takes her name from her very illustrious predecessor, the Petya class corvette. The earlier Kamota had distinguished herself during the 1971 operations. She was an ASW escort to the aircraft carrier INS Vikram as part of the fleet operations for liberation of Bangladesh. But there is one distinct difference. While the earlier Petya class Kamota was acquired from the erstwhile Soviet Union, the new Kamota that you see in front of you is fully Swadeshi, having been built in our own shipyard, the Garden Beach at Kolkata. The new Kamota also has many firsts to her credit. She is the first. ASW Stealth Corvette of Project 28 to be built at Garden Reach. She is the first warship to be built with warship-grade steel, which has been developed indigenously by DMRL and manufactured by Steel Authority of India Limited within the country. And she is also the first warship to have the highest indigenous content of nearly 90%. Regards to her propulsion and other auxiliary machinery and her weapons and sensors. The Indian Navy's quest for self-reliance and indigenisation started in 1961 with the construction of a small patrol vessel, as the Chairman and Managing Director mentioned, which was at Garden Beach at Kolkata, which is the same shipyard that has built this beautiful. Kamota. Over the years, we also established our ship design directory. Nearly 50 years ago, our ship designers have designed, and our shipyards have constructed 119 warships and submarines for the Indian Navy. The blueprint for the future Indian Navy is firmly anchored. on self reliance and indigenization and today we have 42 ships and submarines under construction in different private and public shipyards within the country it is a matter of great pride that over the decades we have transformed from a buyers navy to a builders navy having achieved some measure of success with regard to reliance on the float component of a warship having achieved some progress towards the move component in terms of our propulsion machinery we now need to concentrate on the fight component in terms of our weapons and sensors 
we need to ensure that future warships will have every aspect, whether it's the weapons and sensors, machinery or the hull, indigenous, so that future Indian naval warships can be 100% made in India. The Indian Navy is a multi-dimensional force which is ever ready to take on any challenges in the Indian Ocean region. India has vast maritime interests and the responsibility of protecting these interests falls squarely on the shoulders of men in white uniform. Because it is the responsibility of the Indian Navy to ensure that India's maritime interests, which have a vital relationship with the nation's economic growth, are allowed to develop unhindered both in peace and war. On being commissioned in a short while from now, INS Kamoka will become a potent part of the Eastern Fleet and the Eastern Naval Command. And she will take on her tasks and roles and the maritime challenges in the Bay of Bengal and the eastern part of the Indian Ocean region, which is part of the operational area of responsibility of the Eastern Naval Command. I would like to congratulate the commanding officer and the commissioning crew and convey that they have the onerous responsibility of owning their operational skills and keeping the ship combat ready at all times. And I have no doubt that the captain and the crew will respond to this challenge and carry out their tasks and duties with land and alacrity and bring credit to the name of the ship and keep the flag of the Indian Navy and the flag of the nation flying high at all times. I would like to wish the captain and the crew and all those who sail on this fine ship, fair winds, following seas, and success in every endeavor. Jen.